Living, Conscience of the Novel. Alongside with the story of Anna Karenina, there is another, not less important storyline. This is Konstantin Levin's story. So, there are two, two stories in the novel, about a man and a woman. Levin is a man who stands out in the people we see in the novel. He is a spiritual searcher. He tries to reveal and understand secret laws of life. He became an orphan in his early age, so family was of great value to him. He met the Sherbatsky's family because he was a friend of young Prince Sherbatsky. So, at that time, Levin was in love with the entire family. He liked the relationship between the spouses Sherbatsky. He liked the relationship between the parents and the children in this family. He just couldn't help falling in love with one of the Sherbatsky's daughters. He fell in love with Kitty. She was the personification of family, love, coziness, care, happiness, all the things he himself lacked. Levin proposed Kitty, but she, being in love with Bronsky, refused him. His mind agreed with her refusal. It couldn't have been otherwise, he said. But his soul didn't want to accept this. He went to his village. He worked a lot side by side with his peasants. He read different books. He reflected on how to improve his life and the life of people around. He tried to be very busy, but the despair of his soul sometimes burst. He said to one of his friends, it's time for me to die. Now I know that I shall soon be dead. For him, it was darkness everywhere without having Kitty and family. But he stayed persistent in all his everyday activities. He had a wonderful trait that many characters in this novel lack. It is fortitude. When Kitty refused Levin's proposal, she understood that he was a good man, that she had always loved him, and it was a true love, not passion. She repented sincerely of her refusal, but fate gave them another chance. They got married. In Levin's storyline, Tolstoy describes this couple marital life with love and care. He describes their wedding ceremony, different misunderstandings and reconciliations, household activities, the birth of their first child, etc. Tolstoy makes Levin face with the most important existential things in life – love, death, birth, solitude, marriage, labor, creativity – and the author makes Levin reflect on these existential things deeply. Chapter 20 of Part 5 is called Death in the Russian version of the book. And it was the only chapter of the novel that had a name. This chapter is dedicated to the death of Levin's brother, Nikolai. Tolstoy watches thoroughly the process of humans dying with all its struggles and mystery. Kitty and Levin were witnesses of Nikolai's death. They were at his bed, and that experience made them wiser and closer to each other. Religion, faith, is another thing that disturbed Levin. And here we can see how his mind and soul disagreed on this subject. His mind rejected religion, didn't believe in God. He even confessed this to the priest before his wedding. But his soul prayed to God when his wife was giving 
birth to their first child. Lord, have mercy on us, pardon and help us, he prayed. The thought of God made him at once pray for forgiveness and mercy. Katie appreciated her husband's lack of faith more than false religious devotion of other people. She appreciated his sincerity, integrity, empathy, generosity. The story of Levin is the story about mind and soul of every person who looks for the truth. This goal became so significant for him that he couldn't go on with his life until he did not know the truth. Without knowledge of what I am and why I am here, it is impossible to live, said Levin to himself. And since I cannot know that, I cannot live either. But then his life and people around him gave the answer to his question. Our soul knows this truth, but we don't hear our soul. I have discovered nothing. I have merely found out what I knew, he said. His faith couldn't be limited just by the teachings of one Christian church. He cared about all humanity. If the principal proof of the existence of God is his revelation of what is goodness, then why does this revelation confine itself to the Christian church only? What is the relationship of that revelation to the Buddhist and Mohammedan faiths, which also teach to be good? It seemed to him that he had the answer to this question, but he had no time to formulate it to himself before he entered the nursery. Konstantin Levin is the conscience of the novel because he tried to live a conscious life that every human should live to answer the main question, what I am and why I am here.